The formal establishment of Israel in 1948 resulted in the first major Arab-Israeli war. While the combined Arab armies of the region tried to reverse the call for independence, the events following 1948 also generated nationalist-based resistance. One of the most prominent nationalist-based movements became the PFLP, the Popular Front for the Liberation of Palestine, with its leader, George Habash. The roots of the PFLP are found in 1948 with the Palestinian exodus from Lida. In that year, George Habash, still a medical student, was exiled from his ancestral home along with his family. But the events following 1948 would force Habash into the political arena. At the Literary Society of the American University of Beirut, where he was studying for his medical degree, Habash came into contact with Arab nationalists, including the Palestinian tactician Wadi Haddad. And together with other cohorts, they would commence the ANM, the Arab Nationalist Movement. Now, in this early period, the ANM believed in Arab unity, anti-colonialism, and the reconstruction of Palestine. But they were also convinced that the Egyptian president, Gamal Abdel Nasser, held the keys to liberating the Arab world. And indeed, Nasser would project himself as the champion of Arab nationalism and liberation during the 1950s and 60s. But the collapse of the United Arab Republic in 1961, the Arab League's failure to divert Israel's water project in 1964, and the humiliating defeat in 1967 represent what is known today as the demise of Arab nationalism. It fragmented the ANM internally, which now had a more radical, young, disillusioned left wing, and this shattering military defeat also had a deep impact on the political views of George Habash. He created a separate group within the ANM, the NFLP, the National Front for the Liberation of Palestine, and he became convinced that it was not just a matter of military victory by Arab governments, but a social and political revolution that had to precede the liberation of Palestine. He adopted Marxist-Leninism, endorsing class struggle, guerrilla warfare, mass mobilization, and his convictions of a strong political party led him to the negotiated merge of various Palestinian Marxist factions, the result being the formal establishment of the PFLP in December of 1967. Together with other regional allies, Habash commenced the Rejectionist Front, endorsing a one-state solution for Palestine. And this time around, it was no longer a foreign Arab government holding the keys to Palestine's liberation, but the Palestinian peasant and worker who represented the core of the new social revolution. But despite its Marxist ideology, the movement was careful not to alienate the Palestinian middle class, nor other factions involved in armed struggle against Israel. One of the main political minds behind the PFLP was Palestinian writer Ghassan Kanafani, and like Habash, he came from a middle-class family who were affected by the exodus of 1948. Having joined the PFLP in 1967, they theorized about the transition from Arabism to an internationalist movement. Perhaps because of its strong ideological underpinnings or its uncompromising leadership, the PFLP remains one of the most powerful factions in the Palestinian territories. Now, since the demise of Arab nationalism, the movement has matured in many ways. It's adopted a more flexible approach to its mode of operation and a view of its friends and foes, a topic which we will be discussing in a future vlog.